Hey everybody, this is Just Watch. I am Mike. Thank you for stopping by and checking out our content today. If you like our content, please do hit the subscribe button. Also hit the alert bell so that you get notified when we release a new episode. Today, I want to talk about something that's been somewhat of a hot topic amongst the watch YouTube channels and watch blogs over the last week or two, and that is the Rolex bubble as to whether or not it is breaking. I know that one of my favorite YouTubers, Adrian over at Bark and Jack, stirred up a bit of a hornet's nest on his channel uh, about a week and a half ago when he put out a video with kind of a clickbaity, and that's a, a self-described clickbaity, I'm not picking on him, uh, title about the Rolex bubble bursting. And he actually provided some pretty good evidence showing that there might be a flattening or even a downturn in pricing. Kind of wanted to talk about that though, because I'm not really seeing it as much as he did, especially looking at the auction markets. And one of the better auctioneers in the watch industry, Phillips Auctions, just concluded a big auction at the end of November out of Hong Kong. And I pulled out some pieces that I thought were really interesting, especially given the topic based on what they sell. So we had five watches, five Rolexes that I chose that to look at. Three of them are what you'd call like new vintage and that they are five digit series Rolexes. Two of them are 16600 Sea Dwellers. And one of them is a 114270 Explorer. Uh, of these three watches, all three went quite a bit above expectation on the auction price and went good a good amount above what I have seen them selling for here in the U.S. on a couple of the watch sites that I follow, those being Bob's Watches out of California and HQ Milton out of San Francisco, California. Both are very well reputed uh, secondhand and certified Rolex dealers. Anyways, what I want to do is flip over to my computer and do some screen sharing and point those out. Also, there were two other vintage watches that I wanted to talk about as well that had some fairly surprising results at auction. The first is a 5512 Submariner that really had a stunning price as far as its final hammer price and also a 6538. If you guys don't know that one, that is the famous Large Crown James Bond Submariner. That is the OG Large Crown Submariner. So I want to take a look at these two as well. Two of them because they're just gorgeous examples of watches. And like I said, the 5512 really achieved. Actually, both of them really went at a pretty surprising hammer price. So let's flip over to my computer and take a look at these and do some screen sharing. So here are some of the watches that just went to auction with Philips. This is right off of the Philips auction website, philips.com. We're going to talk about the five digit sea dwellers first. We have two of them to talk about. First is a 1992. This is fairly early on in the production run of the five digit sea dweller. And you can see, you know, zoom in on it here. It's a nice case. I mean, it is extremely nice. You know, it doesn't look like it has any dings or dents or scratches or anything like that. It does look to not have been polished. You know, you can see no marks to speak of on the bezel inserts. Everything looks good. It's hard to tell for sure. You know, it's only a few photos that we're looking at here. There's not a lot to go by. And it does have the full set, including the pin tool and the anchor, which I know is also makes it more desirable. However, <laughs> Let's look at the price on what this thing went for. So the estimate was US or I'm sorry, HK Hong Kong, $50,000 to $80,000. The conversion rate on Hong Kong dollar to US dollar is about 13 cents to one. So that gives us about 6,400 to 10,300. And it went for 100,000 Hong Kong dollars, which means it sold for... 10,000 US, 10,300. So quite a bit above what you would be looking at in the US for this piece. I know I purchased one of these on HQ Milton about a year and a half ago for 6,500 and it was in very good condition. It was not a full set. It did include the box, uh, but you're paying a lot for papers and anchor and a pin tool here. Granted, as I said, the watch is in fantastic condition and it is an early reference for this reference, but 
I don't know. I just thought that a uh, hundred thousand Hong Kong dollars was pretty high. You know, that's quite a bit above the highest estimate for this watch. Second one we're going to talk about is also a 16600 C dweller. Same thing here. You can see it estimate was 40 to 60,000 Hong Kong and it actually went for 68,750. So once again, more than 10% above the highest estimate. Pretty shocking stuff here. So you're talking about $8,000 or so. And once again, this one has, you know, really nice condition and looks like it is very inclusive as far as everything that you're getting there. But you're paying a lot of money over what I've been seeing these things selling for. So I thought that was pretty interesting as well. Third one is this 114270 Explore. Once again, you can see the watch is in very nice, looks to be original, almost like new old stock condition. You know, not seeing any signs of it being repolished there. It looks like original finish and no dings or dents that you can really see or scratches or anything along that lines. They're not giving us a lot of photos here. But what's really surprising is, once again, let's look at the estimate, 30 to 47,000. And it went to hammer for 52.5. And don't forget this hammer price. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty positive that this does not include the auction fees either. So you're actually adding another 5 to 10% on top of this 52.5K price. So they're paying quite a bit above going market here. You're talking about seven or $8,000 for this Rolex Explorer. Now, there's at least two of these available right now on HQ Milton for 5,300 to 5,500. They're in very good condition. And I know Bob's often has these as well for right around that same price. So you're paying, or whoever purchased this, paid quite a bit above kind of the asking price, or the regular asking price of what you're seeing on kind of some reputable watch websites right now. Now let's talk about some of the cool rare vintage pieces that just went to hammer as well. First one we're going to talk about is this stunning 5512 Rolex Submariner. Now for you guys that don't know the 5512, this is the first Submariner that had crown guards. Really nice example here. A couple of other things that kind of drove up. Oh actually I didn't point out the price here. Look at the price that this went for. The estimate was, if I can get my mouse to click on the right spot here. <laughs> it doesn't want to doesn't want to highlight the price for some reason. So the estimate was 470,000 Hong Kong to 785,000 Hong Kong. So 60 basically we'll just call it 60 to 100,000. dollars It went for more than double the highest estimate. It went for 1.937 Hong Kong dollars. So this puppy drew a hell of a price. Now, why did it draw this huge price? A couple of things going on here. First of all, you have a gorgeous gilt dial with some wonderful patina, a little bit of a chocolate color here. Collectors love dials like this. And you can see that the loom plots are in great shape. There's not a lot of chipping going on there and some really nice patina on the handset as well. Second thing that I think made this watch really valuable is it has the original red triangle insert on the bezel here. This is a really rare find from uh, 5512, especially one from the first year of production, 1959. You can also see the case retains its original bevels, which is always desirable. You can see a nice depth there on the lug hole as well. So good stuff there. Amazing price and amazing watch. Whoever is the winner of this watch paid a pretty price for it, but they bought themselves a heck of a watch. So really nice stuff there on the 5512. And finally, we have the OG Submariner. This is the James Bond watch, the large crown 6538 that you guys all know and love. Wonderful gilt dial here. Really nice kind of patina going on the dial. Nothing too crazy. You can see that once again, you have some nice loom plots. You have a little bit of difference in color. You can see the right here, the 25 after compared to the 30 is a little bit different color, but really nice gilt handset too. You can see that patina on the handset is gorgeous and not a lot of fading, simple Swiss marking, and of course, four lines of text, which is always desirable as well on a 6538. Now, what surprised me about this watch is the price, especially given the quality of the dial, the bezel insert, the case. And if you guys remember, we had a 6538 last summer 
without a bezel auction in New York for over a million dollars US. Here, the estimate was $359,000 to $641,000, or $2.8 million to $5 million Hong Kong dollars, and it wound up only hammering at $3 million, which I find really interesting. It is well below, you know, you're talking, that's about 450000 if I'm doing, or about 440000 if I'm doing my math correctly. So really surprising price there, as far as I'm concerned, as far as what this went for. I feel like somebody in the Rolex collecting world got themselves a heck of a deal with this watch, and they're probably going to be able to flip this for a really nice profit someday. So nice stuff there as well. Anyways, that is it for the pieces that I wanted to show you guys. Let's go back over to the studio and get out of here. All right, so that is it for this episode, everybody. Thank you for stopping by and checking us out. We will be back with more content soon. In the meantime, you can watch more videos over here or over here, I forget which side it is. You can also subscribe if you haven't already, if you like the content. Thanks again, everybody, for checking us out. We'll be back soon with a new episode.